Hello, thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Dr. Kathleen Davenport and I'm here at HSS Florida to talk about maintaining flexibility. And so I specialize in part in dance medicine. That's a subspecialty that I do. So flexibility is something that we talk about a lot, but maintaining flexibility is good for all activities and all types of people. So we wanted to make sure that we address this for everyone who needs to maintain flexibility throughout their activities as well as their lives. So I'm Dr. Kathleen Davenport at HSS Florida, and I'm gonna let George introduce himself as well. Hi everybody, my name is George Hura. I'm the clinical manager here at HSS Florida Rehabilitation and Performance Center. I work closely with Dr. Davenport and her active population um, in trying to restore flexibility and strength for all of our patients here in Florida. So we're going to have a conversation about flexibility. A lot of these questions are questions that patients have asked us and that we've worked on, talked together, and work with our patients here and elsewhere. So one of the first questions that I get is, what is the best type of stretch? So George, what do you say when someone says, what's the best stretch that I can do? I think the best stretch is one that gets incorporated into your daily routine and is done on a continuous basis. So it could be incorporated into your exercise routine if you're doing exercise three or four times a week or even after a sporting activity, whether it be tennis, golf, you know, just taking the time after these activities and dedicating a good 15 to 20 minutes for a proper cool down stretch. I totally agree. That's exactly what I tell my patients. And then I also add, to them, it's the one that you're going to do correctly and the one you're going to do regularly. And to be honest, with every single activity and every single body or body needs, sometimes those stretches are a little different. So it's nice to work with someone like myself and particularly with George to get that right regimen of which stretches are best for you. So one of the questions that I get a lot is, can I still become flexible at, you know, during, under a flex, the stretching before, is this something that I can continually work on? So what is your typical answer for your patients is, can I still become flexible? I get that all the time. You know, we have people who live on the very flexible mobility end of the spectrum, and then we have people who are just very tight. And what I say to people is that you can be flexible at any age. You know, it doesn't matter how old you are, how young you are, you can absolutely gain both strength and flexibility throughout age. A lot of times though, I do see people stretching, maybe not with the best technique, because when we focus on stretching, we're really focusing on stretching things like muscles and stretching tendons. And sometimes people end up just stretching joint capsules and that's not necessarily getting where you wanna go. And so when we're starting a new stretching regimen, I usually ask people to really work with someone like George with physical therapy to make sure they're doing it correctly. Cause absolutely I can start someone out with handouts and a program, but it really is all about technique. And so the whole goal of physical therapy is to learn the right stretches for you to do them with the right technique and then to be able to incorporate them in your life and continue with them. How do you address that, George? Like, yeah, what do you like with becoming more flexible? First thing we gotta do is identify the target area that we're trying to address. So, you know, for example, you know, we want to address the lower leg, you know, if they've been doing a lot more, you know, stuff on the core or increased their walking. Um, now that the weather's going to get a little bit nicer here. What we want to do is really focus on the technique. So just a quick example, two big things that we try to teach our patients is first thing is, you know, technique is everything, right? So we want to make sure, you know, your traditional, like, stretch for your lower leg will hit usually two muscle groups, your gastroc. So we want to maintain a nice upright body, okay? Your back leg has to be nice and straight, straight. And you see this a lot. This is poor technique, right? Leaning over, right? And they don't feel anything in their calf. All you have to stay nice and tall and then just lean forward, right? We're gonna hold that for a good 20 to 30 seconds. And you should feel a nice stretch in the top of the lower leg. Another exercise that we're gonna do is to get the soleus muscle. And what we're gonna do is now is you're gonna unlock your knee, which is gonna be bending your knee and you're gonna sit back. And that should feel different. It should feel the stretch in a different part of the lower leg, which I'll highlight. You're gonna hold that again, 20 to 30 seconds. And again, the stretch should be felt lower part of the lower leg. And that's a good example of, you know, 
properly doing the exercise with proper technique can really make a difference in the patient feeling the stretch in the um, targeted area. Those are great ones. And I really like how you're keeping your feet very straight, or sometimes we say parallel, because I know sometimes people turn them in or out. So that was awesome. Thank you. Do you ever have someone who, you know, we're, we're talking so much about technique, like does someone ever ask you or does you, do you ever see people come in who are over stretching and hurt themselves stretching? You know, you know, obviously we have a lot of access to information now, right, with the internet. And so there's a lot of videos out there. And, you know, I think the best thing is, you know, the, one of the main messages we want to provide is really getting that proper guidance. Um, it'll be from, uh, you know, your physical therapist, your doctor, you know, one of our great uh, colleagues, the HSS exercise physiologist, to help provide that guidance in the proper way to perform these stretches. And again, I think you really got to identify, you know, when am I going to incorporate these um, in my daily routine? Am I doing the proper technique to address the muscles that have been trained with that exercise or sport and making sure that uh, your dosage is correct? Like, how long are you holding it for? Are you going to hold it for five seconds? You're probably not going to get the best um, uh, effect from the stretch. So, you know, really getting those guidance and those key principles will make each stretch be more effective. I agree. And with that guidance on the correct stretch, it's also about getting the correct diagnosis. I know particularly in my dancers, any single tweak or injury or pain, they stretch it out. And sometimes that's exactly the wrong thing and it can make an injury worse. And so sometimes I see people come in. Hamstring is a great example of that. I've seen a lot of people come in with a hamstring pull and they're like, oh, I'll stretch it. And I'm like, oh, whoa, we need to give that a chance for those tissues to come back together. Hamstring stretches are great, but not if it's an acute tear. That's not going to get you where you want to go. You really need to get that to come back before we get some stretches. And so definitely getting that right diagnosis. So I'll see people do an exam, maybe get some imaging if we need it before sending them to you, as you know, to then, and the, you might be starting them with strengthening before we get them into stretching, depending on the diagnosis. So that's why I love working so closely with you so that we can come up with that plan. And then, so the, the another question we get a lot is, you know, we touched about it a little bit, is when is the best time to stretch? This is a great question. And again, I get this one a lot and we talk about it a lot. So I love, I love this question. Um, and I like to use this as the time to talk about different types of stretching because stretching is not stretching. You know, they're very different types of stretching. And there are three main types of stretching, static stretching, dynamic stretching, and then ballistic stretching. So static stretching is really when you like gain or maintain flexibility. That's like holding those stretches, just like you showed with that calf stretch, holding it for a really long time, really getting more flexible. And those really, you get the most bang for your buck kind of at the end of an activity. So maybe getting up first thing in the morning when you're super, super tight, you're not necessarily going to really get the most bang for your buck for that. And sometimes your tissues are a little too cold or they haven't really warmed up enough and you could potentially injure yourself um, with that. I don't know, do you have a few other ones in addition to that calf stretch that you really like for some static stretches when people are already warm? Yeah, so one of the big ones that we'll start setting up is, you know, we tend to be very uh, society that we sit a lot, right? whether we're driving office or on the computer. So one of the ones that we really try to incorporate with most all of our patients is they're really trying to get, you know, flexibility back along the interior aspect of the, of the thigh. So you're know, trying to get someone into a good position, you know, in half kneel, one leg in front, one down. And we really talk about getting nice and tall, tucking that pelvis under you or tucking your tailbone under you and really squeezing that glute. And they should, you should feel a nice pull along the top of that anterior aspect of your thigh. And then you can also go ahead and add some rotations and some twists, right? You can feel some nice, you know, pulling and nice gentle discomfort with the stretches. So we always tell people, I want to feel a stretch discomfort, but no pain when we're doing our stretches. So it should feel like a stretch discomfort, but no pain. That's, that, to me, that's key. Um, so that's one good one we like to give to our patients. Uh, transitioning down to the floor. Um, another one is, you know, a lot of our glute uh, musculature does get, tend to get very tight. So we'll take them down to the floor or their bed 
And what we'll do is going to a figure four, we'll cross the leg, right? And what we'll do is we'll come in and we'll bring that knee to the chest. And again, trying to get that nice stretch discomfort along the back of the hip and your glute. And again, holding stretch for about 20, 30 seconds. And I usually tell people, you know, about a good three to four um, repetitions per side. Yeah, and now with our hand washing, you should know all the 20 second songs. So you could sing any one of those. Do you have any other ones, like any good hamstring ones? I know we just said to watch out for hamstring stretches, but when it's appropriate to do it, do you have some favorites? Yeah, so, you know, touching back to your uh, great point about, you know, someone's, uh, you know, gets, uh, they strain their hamstring, you know, they're out uh, on the tennis court doing things, you know, one of the things we will have them do some mobility drills, which will demonstrate, but they, you know, they instinctively say, well, you know, it felt tight to me, so I just like got my stretch yoga strap, which I found in my bag, and I started doing some really uh, heavy stretches. So what we tend to uh, show our patients that they have like an uh, acute uh, hamstring strain they've been assessed by our docs is, you know, we'll have them on the floor, you can get your strap, and what we'll do is nice, gentle gliding, okay? So what we're trying to do is get nice mobility to the tissue without going to a aggressive stretch. So again, doing 20 to 30 passes, nice, gentle gliding motions, and trying to restore the mobility as opposed to giving a very firm, hard, static stretch. I really like how you say the restoring mobility. You know, that's such a nicer way to think about flexibility because sometimes when I have people hear flexibility, they're thinking like they need to do splits or something like that. I, I really like that term, um, restoring mobility. George, thanks. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, I wanted to go now, so that was our static stretching. Did you have anything else to add to that before um, we talk about dynamic stretching? No, I think the dynamic was a good thing to segue into just because that's a, talking about when should I stretch, you know, what's the best time. I think depending on the activity you're going to be doing, you know, I think it's getting the, the tissue ready to do whatever you're going to be doing, whether it be a, uh, going out to play golf, tennis, again, sport, any type of sport, is really getting the tissue uh, prepared to be doing that. So you're not, we're not coming straight out of our car, you know, uh, and going onto the court, doing anything. It's really getting the tissue ready to uh, prepare for what's about to happen on the court. So um, I think some of the dynamic stuff, we can kind of go over real quick um, if, we, if you're ready. Yeah? That's perfect. Yeah, I love the dynamic stretching to really think of it as a warm up and making sure that we're doing the dynamic stretching at the beginning and thinking about the flexibility, the restoration of movement, not just as the static stretching, but also these with the dynamic warm up. So, yeah, go. What you got? Yeah, and I think one of these things that is important is really timing out your day. So, like, if you know you're going to need a little bit of time to get yourself ready to, um, to do what you need to do for your sport, is you know, making the time to get, there, get yourself early. To the, the training center or the facility or the park, wherever we're gonna be meeting, or wherever we're gonna be doing that exercise. So, the first one we'll talk about is going ahead and doing some like knee hugs coming up, right? Trying to get nice, good mobility there, you know. And then we're gonna bring up, you can grab and come up here, grabbing up, nice. And then we can get the back, so you can do some scoops, right? Nice and easy. And again, these are nice, just trying to get the heart rate up a little bit. Um, you can come across and try to come over, right? Coming across, come over. And that's, that's challenging. You know, you can simplify things, okay? So you just nice and do some like nice heel butt walks, right? And then again, depending on what you're going to be doing, you can come to each side, you know, a couple of repetitions. You just say, you know, five to 10 on each side would be good. I'm trying to get, you know, the body ready to have a specific movement pattern that you're going to be doing. And again, still working in some balance here. Right, so we can work from here. Getting the posterior chain ready to go. Again, I'll just show you this version right here. Maybe that'd be a nice way. And again, you know, doing some movement patterns, getting ready for it, especially if we're talking about lower extremity. And if you're doing some upper extremity, you can bring out your bands and get your arm ready to go as well. And these are great to do too, you know, whether you're going out to the tennis court or you're at home and just need to get up out of your chair a little bit, these are also some good ones to do. And then maybe doing some of the static at the end 
And I really want to point out something important that you are doing, which is not ballistic stretching. So the third type of stretching is what we call ballistic stretching. And that's kind of like bouncing, like you're in kind of bouncy, 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 and, and tissues don't really like that. So we recommend against that type of bouncy stretch. So it's important to notice that the movement that you're doing, George, is very much moving through it, holding it, but you're not trying to like bounce. And I also notice you're not trying to go to your end, 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 end range. You know, you could push your flexibility harder, but that's not the point of the dynamic stretch. And it really is to warm it up, to help go through the motion without trying to push it beyond where it really wants to be. Yeah, I think it's really, again, getting the body ready, you know, little by little. And each one of those reps can go into a greater depth as you feel more ready and you feel more warmed up. So you gradually get yourself into the position that you're going to be mimicking um, when you're doing your sport. And I think going back to the ballistic stretching, I mean, there's a very um, small population that's probably indicated for, whether it be, you know, the jumping athletes, your dancers, you know, which is your priming the neurological system to be ready to perform at a high level, at high um, heights and high um, levels of difficulty. So the majority of the population is, you know, probably not indicated for. And I think things that we covered today are, you know, it's going to, it's really going to help everybody, you know, try to stay healthy and try to keep the tissue in a good um, state so that it's happy and you can stay uh, able to do what you like to be doing. Awesome. Thank you so much for preparing such awesome stretches for us and taking the time to do that. Um, this was super helpful for me and um, super fun to, to chat about. So thank you so much. All right. It was a pleasure. All right. Take care. All right, you too. All right.